What is up you guys? It is Avery here. Wanted to bring you guys a brand new video. After being gone for a hot minute, want to put this out here in the UE tubing world to kind of talk about this uh, deck that uh, me and uh, my dad, for those of y'all that are a veteran on the uh, Avery LR32 channel, know that we both play Yu-Gi-Oh! together. And uh, he's come up with this really cancerous concoction of a deck that after over... 200 games he's played now. He has won 80% of his games. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive right into it. So um, it all revolves around this card that comes out in Dark Neo Storm known as Spell Mining Cave. And what it does is that if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, your opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare attacks. If you control more monsters than your opponent does, you cannot activate monster effects or declare attacks. Once per turn during the end phase, if you control the same number of monsters as your opponent, destroy this card. So here's what's really interesting about this card. So already right off the bat, it says that uh, your opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare attacks. This sentence is very important because it specifically says your opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare attacks. What we figured out through playtesting is that even if you have a monster that says it's unaffected by other card effects, it still does not allow that monster to be unaffected by Spell Mining Cave. Because Spell Mining Cave specifically says your opponent cannot activate monster effects or declare attacks. It doesn't care about the monster, it cares about the opponent. The opponent cannot declare attacks. So if you're playing against a deck that you know plays cards that are you know unaffected by card effects, Spell Mining Cave just doesn't care. So uh, just right out of the gate, I just want to tell you right now that your toughest matchups are going to be cards like Banisher of the Radiance, Macrocosmos, or the new Endemion spell counter deck that's coming out. Because Endemion, of course, it has the Pendulum effect, which can, which counts it as a spell card, where it can special summon itself out by removing six counters and then popping cards on the field, equal to the number of cards on your side of the field that you can place a spell counter on. So, you know, if you've got four cards on your side of the field that you can place a spell counter on, remove six counters, get out him, you're going to pop four cards, he's going to get four counters. So that's definitely this deck's toughest matchup next to uh, True Draco, because, of course, True Draco has a lot of ways to pop back row. But other than that, um, it has a great matchup against uh, Salamangrate. For the most part, this deck really doesn't care if it goes first or second. It really just depends on what your opening hand is, honestly. But after 200 plus games and winning 80% of those games, people just end up rage quitting, or even if they're playing Salamangrate, you know, yeah, Salamangrate rage hurts, but if you've got like a Magic Reflector and all that set up, then you're just good to go. So let's just go ahead and get into this deck profile here and throw this out into the Yugi Tubing community and see just what it is people think about this cancer. I told someone about this card yesterday, and they said, this isn't cancer, this is just a tumor. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's get right into this. So we're playing two Card Card D and two Watch Cat. So what Watch Cat does is that if you control no monsters, you can special summon it from your hand, so it's a Cyber Dragon. During your end phase, if this card was special summoned this turn, you can banish this card, set one continuous spell directly from your deck, you can only use each effect of Watch Cat once per turn. So, i.e., you can set Wave Motion Cannon or even Field Barrier. Field Barrier protects Spell Mining Cave, which we're going to get into an interesting little combo here with this card and Field Barrier in just a second. Card Card D is just for draw power. Um, we found that three Watch Cat was a little bit just um, not as consistent. So Car Card D just giving you that extra draw power is really good as well. We're also playing one One Day of Peace, three Pot of Extravagance because we really don't care about our extra deck. We're playing one Ledger of Ledger Main. Um, what it does is that you can banish three cards on the top of your deck face down. And then during your third standby phase after this card's activation, you add all three cards to your hand. You can only activate one Ledger of Ledger Main per turn. So I'm sure you guys are thinking, Avery, this, this deck's not going to last past turn two or three. And I would say that you're very wrong because once you get out spell mining cave your opponent's not gonna be able to do anything and really not a lot of decks right now are playing a whole lot of back row hate granted this could change once you get the endemion structure deck and stuff like that but as of right now after playing 200 plus games i mean an 80 percent chance win ratio is very very good you know um you're easily going to go past turn three with this deck since wave motion cannon is pretty much you know it is rather your win condition here. you're going to be waiting for eight turns pretty much or four turns if you have two on the field you're going to get uh ledger of ledger main off uh, we're playing three Magic Reflector. You target a face-up spell card to control. You place a counter on it, and if it would ever be destroyed, you can move the counter instead. So you can play Wave Motion Cannon, activate Magic Reflector, put a counter on it. You can activate Spell Mining Cave. You don't have Field Barrier, put a counter on it. They try to pop it. The counter will go away instead. We're playing two Terraforming, three Potted Duality, three card or three Demise of the Land, not Card of Demise, two Hand Destruction, three Field Barrier, three Wave Motion Cannon, three Spell Mining Cave, don't let the opponent play Yu-Gi-Oh! Two Heavy Dust Storm, three Metaverse, one Solemn Judgment, and three Dark Bribe. Um, the extra deck can be just kind of whatever you want, and then the side deck here is just other cards that you could potentially play in the deck. So we were originally playing Triple Card of Demise, but we found that 
we that you could have a really big hand with this deck once you get set up. You know, your your main setup board that you want to have is of course Spell Mining Cave with Wave Motion Cannon. Um just and even with Field Barrier 2, just to lock down your spell mining cave and just stall out and win the game from there. Um what's interesting about Field Barrier, which it kind of has a set rotation effect in it. Um field spell cards on the field cannot be destroyed. Neither player can activate a new field spell card. That's where the set rotation effect comes into play. And you can of course only control one field barrier. So you activate spell mining cave, you activate field barrier. It's going to protect the spell mining cave. If your opponent's playing something like Cosmo, Grave Keepers, uh Salamangrates. You know, they can't activate their field spell. And what's really cool about Spell Mining Cave is let's say that you're going first. You activate Spell Mining Cave and activate Field Barrier protecting the Spell Mining Cave. You're going to end your turn. Of course, your opponent hasn't made their turn yet. If you don't play a monster, which you're more than likely not going to, the Spell Mining Cave is going to try and pop. But because of Field Barrier, field spell cards on the field can't be destroyed, which includes Spell Mining Cave's own effect. So you go first, activate this, activate this. Spell Mining Cave is going to try and pop itself. Phil Barry is going to say, nah, fam, we, we're playing too much cancer, and it's going to stay on the field even though your opponent doesn't control any monsters, which is just absolutely busted. We're playing Hand Destruction, again, instead of Card of Demise, just because of the fact that, um, you know, sometimes you want to get cards out of your hand just to draw new cards. You know, you can pick which cards you get rid of instead of having to play Card of Demise and, you know, draw however many amount and lose the rest of your hand. Um, again, you know, once you get set up with this deck, you're really going to have a bunch of cards in your hand, and you're pretty much just going to want to stall out until you hit Wave Motion Cannon for the win. Um, Solid Dragon and Dark Bribe, of course, to have that negation in case the opponent hits like a Heavy Death Storm, Salaman Great Rage, Twin Twister, anything like that. Um, even against the Endemion deck, you want to obviously Dark Bribe the Endemion because that's their win condition to beat you, you know, popping four or five cards is just busted. Um, we were debating Final Countdown. Well, I should say my dad was debating Final Countdown. Um, I think that this is a terrible choice. You know, you're, you could go 20 turns of this deck, but Final Countdown is just bad. Um, he was debating Card Trader as well. You know, you could shuffle a card from your hand to the deck to draw a card. Um, but, you know, you're exchanging that card for a new one, and if you draw into the same one, you're not really getting a plus out of it. Um, you're also debating Summon Limit, just kind of shut down your opponent from, you know, um, summons. Uh, there can only be one. Uh, band played on just kind of other floodgate cards that kind of help shut down the opponent one that we were thinking of recently was watt giraffe because it has the continuous effect that it can attack the opponent directly uh, whenever it inflicts spell damage to the opponent by a direct attack your opponent can activate spells traps spell trap effects or monster card effects until the end phase of this turn um, now if i remember correctly that's an activation effect however it has a continuous effect to attack the opponent directly and that's something that you have to be careful with with spell money cave you know this is a very potentially powerful floodgate card that these anti-meta decks are going to be playing. The meta decks aren't going to be messing with this because they want to just vomit all over the field, drop a giant dookie on the board, and just have, you know, three negates and, you know, play with themselves. That's what they want to do. They're going to play STD, self-touching decks, which is what this is. This is a self-touching deck, you know, like plus five million with a hint of cancer mixed in the bowl of, you know, party sauce. <laughs> so... You know, you have to be very careful when playing against this Spell Mining Cave dot deck lockdown the shit nuts <laughs> because it's just busted. Like, once they get set up, you're not going to win. Like, if you're not playing Twin Twisters, <clears throat> Heavy Dust Storm, anything like that, you just need to scoop and go to the next game. Or if you want to be that one guy in the room who's going to stall because they're salty, go right ahead. You're still going to lose and we're going to beat you. <laughs> but Spell Mining Cave is not going to be played by the meta decks, it's going to be played by these anti meta decks potentially even stun <clears throat> since they don't play a whole lot of monsters but it doesn't stop continuous effects you know trickstar is actually another tough matchup now that i think about it because you know they have lycoris it's a continuous effect it still goes off red eyes darkness metal dragon um or red eyes flare metal dragon is a continuous effect to deal 500 um say if they watch draft it has a continuous effect to attack directly so you could just summon watch draft keep on poking for 1200 and the opponent's not gonna be able to declare attacks or activate any effects <clears throat> which is, of course, very busted. Uh, Demise of the Land, every deck special summons, that's just kind of straightforward. Metaverse is very busted, being able to add this field spell or activate it. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can play Spell Mining Cave. You know, I recently saw on YouTube where there was just a straight mill deck where the guy played, you know, triple reincarnation, triple metaverse, triple Demise of the Land. He pretty much just played 40 cards with three Spell Mining Cave and just a bunch of mill cards like Trickster Reincarnation, Gift of Greed, etc. to mill the opponent out, and then Spell Mining Cave just locked them out of the game. So, this deck is very powerful, it's very strong, it's definitely something that you need to watch out for um, when Dark Neo Storm drops, because I guarantee you, people are going to be testing this card. People are going to be taking this to locals and just playing Spell Mining Cave and having the biggest shit-eating grin on their, on their face. Um, 
So it's definitely something that you got to watch out for. It's, it's something that, uh, you know, you got to take seriously because this card is very busted and it's very good. Uh, if you're playing this card, people will try to cheat you. People will try to say, no, I can still attempt to activate and detach an Exceeds Materials cost or pay the cost of the card. No, you cannot. It specifically says that you can't even activate the monster effect. You can't even pay the cost of a card, and you can't declare a tax, even though that your monster is unaffected, because it says that the opponent cannot declare a tax. That's what makes this card so busted and so good, because it just says, no, you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Unless you have a, like a Twin Twister or Heavy Storm Duster, in which case we're going to have Solemn or Dark Bribe, usually. Um, but again, after testing over 200 games, this deck has had about an 80 to 85% chance of winning. Going first or second, it really hasn't mattered. Um, let's do a quick shuffle here. One, two, three, four, five. This is a actually a pretty good hand. You go Pot of Duality. You're going to hit Demise the Land, Field Barrier, and another Duality. You're going to want to add the card of Demise. So we've played the Duality. This is now our opening hand. Five cards. You're going to want to set the Dark Bribe, set the Demise the Land, play Card Card D, draw into two more cards. That's going to get you, your deck's going to shuffle, so that's going to get you to two random cards. Um, as soon as the opponent special summons a monster, you're going to activate Demise of the Land, activating the uh, Spell Mining Cave, because um, you can immediately select a field spell from your deck and activate it. You're going to have out Spell Mining Cave, and you're pretty much just going to win the game from there. Next turn, you activate Field Barrier on Spell Mining Cave, and you just sit there with uh, your STD deck, and you just, uh, you know, you tell the opponent that you're playing Cancer. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of this video. I'd really be interested to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and be sure to share this video around to let people know about the Cancer that is. Spell Money Cave, a.k.a. Mashodu, a.k.a. Cancer the Deck.